The Philips MSX2 VG8235 is the third MSX2 produced by Philips. It quickly replaced the VG8230 that only had 64Ks of RAM, which in turn was a successor of the NMS8220. A computer of similar specs but lacking an internal disk drive. The 8235 was the last of the VG series and was heavily branded and promoted by Philips as part of the new media system, ushering a new age of cross-media technology that would lead to the creation of the Philips CDI. But more about that in another video. In fact, this video is not even about the VG8235, but more about what it was promoted and sold with. The VS80 Color Monitor. You see, in 1984, Amstrad released their CPC 464, followed soon after that by the CPC 6128. While they were good machines overall, their popularity was mostly due to the fact that they came bundled with their dedicated monitor. And while Philips was no stranger to making monitors, the lackluster sales of MSX1 and their rather difficult start in the MSX2 market forced them to approach a more aggressive strategy. The MSX2 VG8235 and the VS80 monitor would from now on become the bundle of choice for the entry-level Philips MSX2 platform. And what a slick monitor it was! Now the connoisseurs among you would have recognized the Commodore 1084, which makes sense, because they're essentially the same machine. The 1084 was in fact manufactured by Philips and licensed to Commodore. The VS80 is a 14-inch color CRT monitor. Boasting a resolution of 600 by 285 pixels, it can operate a raster frequency of 50 or 60 Hz, making it perfect to handle consoles and games from overseas. Powering the device on and off can be performed by pressing the satisfyingly clicky, yet somewhat temperamental, power button. The true beauty of this monitor only happens when flicking the front cover down. Oh yeah, it's got dials, buttons, switches and stuff. Whoa. So let's have a look from left to right. First we have a green to color switch, actually very handy at that time for word processing, which was a big thing for home computers. Right next to it we have an RGB to CVBS signal switch, very handy if you have a tape recorder or a TV tuner. A sound volume control for controlling the volume of the sound. Next to it is a sharpness control, which is pretty much useless nowadays, because we want our pixels to be as blurry as possible. The next three dials are saturation, contrast and brightness, which are pretty much standard on most monitors. But the far left one is where things become interesting, because this dial controls horizontal centering. And the back of the machine offers more customizing options. V-height extended the vertical length of your display, making sure you always had a full screen experience if you wanted to. Vertical centering is similar to the front left dial, it centers your display vertically, while horizontal width, well you've probably guessed by now what it does, horizontal stuff and things. Connectivity wise we have, well, enough to get by uh, TV and audio in. An RGB port that was oddly never enabled on this model. A SCART. Oh yeah. And that's it. Uh, that VCR button allegedly allows you to adjust the picture of your VCR, but I, I never figured out how to make it work. And here it is in 4 minutes or thereabouts, the VG80 color monitor by Philips. In combination with the VG80 to 35 MSX2, Heralding the new media systems age. Truth is, it's a solid monitor. I used it for my MSX2, my Amiga, my Sega Master System, PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. It fell on the floor about three times and it's still going strong. Thanks for watching guys, I know I've been sporadic with these episodes of MSX mentioned, but you know, time is limited and life and stuff. If you want to find me on Facebook, well, Facebook is definitely the place to look, as is Twitter or Instagram. And if you want to help the show develop further, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching and see you next time.